Oh, this is Jeff Thayer, author of Starfish Evolution, back with you today. And today I'm wearing a different hat. I'm not sure why. Um, I wear this from time to time in my gardens. And it's a, uh, it's a work in progress. So what I want to talk to you today about uh, is a concept that's in Starfish Evolution. It's not fully developed because it is a novel but it's something that's kind of dear to my heart and it's the concept of uh, Renaissance men. Renaissance men um, is something which spills over into a concept that's also in the book called Shibumi meaning understated elegance in Japanese. There's a lot of different phrases and a lot of different ways of saying it uh, that uh, so, sort of subdefine it but it's uh, a book that I read back in the 1970s by an author named Trevanian. There's a link below that I recommend uh, if this feels comfortable to you to pick up uh, uh, in any way that you can and, uh, and read it. Uh, it's enjoyable and it develops the concept of Shibumi very deeply. There's a, another concept uh, that was uh, referenced rather deeply in another novel by Eric von Lustebotter called Jian, J-I-A-N. Once again, there's a link below. And uh, it's a novel and uh, it's entertaining as well as, uh, as informational. But the idea uh, that is behind the concept of Renaissance man or Renaissance men and women in uh, uh, Starfish Evolution is that there are a number of different things that, uh, and skills that uh, people can develop throughout their journey on this planet. And my view is um, becoming uh, not just uh, a jack of all trades, but an expert in a number of those deepens the knowledge base uh, of an individual while they walk through this planet. It lowers the stress level because in many ways the more you know the more that you know about a subject, um, in a sense, the better off you are, the more integrated you are as a human being. And so the idea behind Renaissance men in the 1400s to the 1600s in sort of a Western uh, concept is that you develop uh, skill sets that cross the arts, that cross the sciences, that cross the languages. Uh, I have found uh, in my studies of uh, ancient uh, languages, particularly Aramaic, that there are a number of uh, knowledges, a number of uh, understandings and wisdoms that somehow don't get necessarily well translated into the more modern languages of the day. Um, so Renaissance men is about pursuing uh, an eclectic and uh, deeply pursuing an eclectic combination of things that are passionate to you. Now in Jax's case, uh, in Jax's case uh, his passions are my passions ultimately. Uh, his passions are understanding soils, understanding plants, understanding the chemistry and biochemistry, understanding if you will, the archaea bacteria, as it was understood in the 90s and is now no longer considered bacteria. It's its own kingdom uh, through the microbiome project. We now know that uh, this is not a bacteria. It's something very different than a bacteria and it has its own kingdom. But understanding the relationships between soils and plants, that's a passion of Jack's. That's one of his if you will, skill sets that he brings to the table in the book. Um, but there are others. Um, the ability to uh, be able to fix almost anything in a, not just a handyman way, but in a way that is not only imaginative, but also incredibly uh, effective in terms of uh, solving people's problems at work. Um, that's another uh, concept that uh, is developed in the book. Um, he's able to bring to the table in the hardware department uh, a number of solutions for people that uh, would otherwise not, not be 
that effective. Uh, an example is a woman who comes in and wants to put an air conditioner in her home. Um, this has happened to me uh, at Walmart uh, in my experiences where people want to just buy an air conditioner and I'll ask them, where are you going to put it? And the answer will be, well, I'm just going to put it in a window. I say, well, if you put it in a window that faces the sun, you're going to have one result and it may not be as satisfactory as if you put it uh, on in a room where there is shade. So uh, being able to fix a car, being able to uh, change the, the light fixtures in your home, um, excuse me, being able to uh, do a variety of different things and do them very, very well and do them with uh, sort of a, uh, um, a <clears throat> an understanding of them as well as uh, being able to do them in a cost-effective way is, is part of being, if you will, a giant, someone who uh, is able to master the skill and do well with it. So there are many different ways to do that. Um, and I encourage you to explore them. I, I, I think that anyone that's able to paint creatively as well as uh, in a functional way, um, being able to utilize the resources that you have maybe in a different way and in a creative way and turn what might just be a maintenance function into something which is an art form. I think that's part of it. I, an example is in my garden. Um, I live in the woods and uh, in New England and there are countless deadfall in, in, the, uh, in the woods that uh, are, if you will, simply rotting away. And I'll go out and find branches and I will creatively use those branches in some kind of an art form as uh, something which my tomato plants can um, vine into and utilize to stabilize themselves. The same thing's true with my grape arbor. Um, I do the same thing with that. I mean, you can go buy things and do it, or you can just use things that are in the everyday environment around you and turn them into art forms. Um, <clears throat> I tend to, <clears throat> I tend to, from time to time, um, have a little beer and uh, yes, uh, it's one of the things that I do. Um, and, and the bottle caps are an example. One day I decided I wanted to take the bottle caps and save them and paint them um, and turn them into a sunflower as a piece of uh, garden art. Um, I do a lot of it with my copper. Um, when I do copper work, um, I will take uh, copper that normally is, is utilized you know, in, in uh, plumbing, I'll take copper that is grounding rods and I'll turn it into artwork. Um, I'll use torches, I'll use my forge and uh, do something that is creative with it uh, that uh, in a sense would be uh, something that a Renaissance man would do. <coughs> um, another example that I find is, is very refreshing in the garden work is, uh, I'll use this as an example, I um, oftentimes will purchase, because I don't have all of the vegetables growing, I'll purchase uh, organic uh, onions. Um, and, and it's not just onions that you can do this with, but onions and leeks are a great example you cut the ends off of them. Uh, green onions, same thing, you cut the ends off of them. Normally people throw them away or even compost them. But I will take those and replant them rather than throw them away or compost them. And uh, they continue to grow. Um, most people don't know that. You just cut the end off that's got the fuzzy roots that are dried out. And if you plant them and put some uh, uh, soil amendment beneath them, and water them, uh, you'd be surprised you'll wind up uh, with another onion or another onion set. So there's a way of integrating with the world um, based upon your knowledge base that tends not only to save you money, but at the same time it tends to recycle things 
and uh, allows you to integrate into the world in a different and I think a deeper way. So I encourage you to share your Renaissance stories below, I, Renaissance men and women, um, how you bridge the gap between science and math and painting. Da Vinci did it. He was probably one of the more significant Renaissance men, so to speak, um, in the last thousand years, but there's many others. Uh, he just happens to get a lot of press for it, but he was able to paint, he was able to understand math, he was able to understand engineering, he uh, was deep in the world uh, in terms of, uh, of languages. Uh, another example is, um, finally, uh, remember, uh, is, is uh, the man who developed the American Dictionary of the English Language, um, Webster. Um, and not the one you think. Uh, Webster was uh, a person who lived in the 1800s and uh, he was thinking about becoming president and uh, his contemporaries, I believe Washington, Jefferson, Adams, came to him and said anybody can be president but what you, we need to do is you, you need to write the, the dictionary. <coughs> um, <coughs> the reason Excuse me, the reason that they asked Webster to write the American Dictionary of the English Language was because he spoke 23 languages fluently. And one of them was Hebrew. Uh, uh, he, I, the, the list is extensive, you can, you can look it up. Um, but he understood relationships in language in a much more profound way. And I've learned in this journey that, you know, people pursue money, and they pursue resources. But money and resources aren't really power. Not power as most people want in their lives. Knowledge and the ability to integrate that knowledge and use that knowledge. That's where power bases start and grow. And so as I, as I close this video, I, I again encourage you to look deeply into the concept of Renaissance men and women and study them. Um, there's plenty online to, to look at and to consider when you're thinking about the concept of is this something for me? Is this something I should consider? Is this something that uh, I have a passion about? And it, like I said, it can be anything that is something that, that drives you, uh, drives you into a quest to learn more and more and more and then to integrate it with other things that you know and find the connections, connect the dots between the sciences and music, for example, and math and vibrations because it's all related. And because it's related, uh, one thing amplifies another and it builds in a way that integrates you into the world. And I have found as I know more and as I connect more, not only am I surprised by what I find, but I also find there's a sense of deep peace about it. Um, less angst, which is the concept of Shibumi. It's, it's becoming without angst. It's uh, evolving as a human being without angst. <clears throat> and it can be done anywhere. Um, it can be done in your work environment where you utilize every connection and every single interaction with people, whether it be customers or coworkers or both, as a way to build upon becoming a Renaissance man or woman. So again, I invite you to share your, your stories, share your experiences, um, and join the conversation. Once again, have a great day.